Hello, my name is Jane Holden. I'm a research manager at Monash University. Today, I'm joining a river symposium from Melbourne. And I'd like to start by acknowledging the Bunurong peoples of the Kulin Nation, the traditional custodians of the land on which I join you from today and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. My presentation today, Learning and Innovation for River Revitalization in Indonesia, focuses on a collaboration between Monash, the University of Indonesia, the West Java Environmental Agency and the City of Melbourne. This consortium has been working together to share knowledge and develop solutions for the Chitaram River in West Java. The Chitaram River is home to more than 25 million people who rely on the river for water and energy. It's also known to be one of the world's most polluted rivers. Each day, over 200,000 tonnes of solid waste and 300,000 tonnes of waste water are discharged into the waterway, causing degraded river ecologies, poor water quality for irrigation and domestic supply, and poor public health outcomes for people. In December 2018, we were invited by His Excellency Ridwan Kamil, the Governor of the Province of West Java, to contribute new ideas to the Chitaram River Revitalisation Action Plan. To support this action plan, our teams of transdisciplinary researchers have been working with the Environmental Agency to understand the challenges of revitalising the river. Through our learning and innovation program, we have visited riverine communities along the river's most polluted sections. To listen to the community and stakeholders' experiences and to understand the sources of contamination. We've also met with representatives from the military to understand the large scale cleanup efforts and with government to see new river development projects in action. Through workshops, field trips and meetings with local researchers in Bandung, we've been sharing knowledge and exploring opportunities for research collaborations that make an impact. Together, we've been aiming to find holistic pathways for sustainable transformation of the Chitaram River and its vulnerable communities. Monash brings to the Learning Network extensive experience in nature-based projects in Indonesia, Fiji and China. The Revitalising Informal Settlements and Their Environments or RISE program is a major research initiative in Indonesia and Fiji funded by the Wellcome Trust Australia's DFAT and New Zealand's DFAT. RISE's vision is to improve human, environmental and ecological health in informal settlements across the developing world through a novel approach to water management. It does this through community co-design and participatory processes that create and build urban solutions to improve water supply and sanitation in informal settlements. The research is a randomised control trial it assesses the impact on the health of children under five years in a longitudinal study. The RISE program uses nature-based infrastructure to improve sanitation and reduce exposure to contamination. Grey water from kitchens and showers is treated by household biofilters. Black water from toilets goes through community level treatment systems, a pressure tank, septic tank, through subsurface constructed wetlands, surface wetlands, and they're released into the environment through improved drains. This system promotes the health and well-being of settlements and their environments. Using this approach, RISE plans to upgrade 1,200 houses in 24 informal settlements in Indonesia and Fiji, impacting the lives of 7,000 people. In 2020, the idea to build on the RISE concept and create a closed loop integrative system that tackles both water and solid waste was endorsed by the West Java governor during his visit to Monash. The integrated model was further developed during a workshop in Melbourne of academics and government officials from West Java and Victoria that was hosted by the city of Melbourne and Monash. And then COVID-19 hit, and our growing consortium moved to online collaboration to co-design an integrated solution addressing water and waste contamination of the river. The founding principles of river revitalization innovation are planetary health, 
an emerging discipline that links the health of humans to the state of the natural systems on which they depend. And also a circular economy, recognising that people-centred and sustainable circular business models are needed to enable and promote restorative behaviours and practices that clean and protect the planet. We are bringing together Monash's vast body of research and expertise in urban design, urban water management, sustainability transitions and behaviour change science. And combining it with the complementary expertise of our partners across spatial modelling, social systems, across technical and economic feasibility of circular organic waste and plastic waste. Our vision is to create a new paradigm for river revitalisation where we reimagine rivers as an ecological spine, delivering ecosystem services and supporting local circular economies and livelihoods. We will do this by integrating social, economic, ecological and infrastructure solutions into an urban system that supports river revitalisation. Our integrated model has five objectives. The first objective is waterway restoration using green, grey and smart infrastructure to enhance the multiple functions and natural habitat of the river. Number two is waterway and sanitation services using nature-based green infrastructure to clean household water from, house, from houses, from village industry and also livestock farming. Number three, to create local solid waste services that collect, harvest and segregate waste and are enabled through community-led behaviours and practices. Number four, we'll be promoting microeconomies by creating value from waste and generating new jobs and enterprises. And five, climate change adaptation through urban design and nature-based solutions that protects communities from flood, heat and drought. Our roadmap for river revitalisation is envisaged across three steps, starting with a village demonstration of the social technical solutions for river revitalisation and circular economy transitions. And then moving to generating evidence for scaling by evaluating links between land use, pollution and river degradation, and by establishing river health monitoring and reporting systems. And finally, building capacity for river revitalisation and circular economy by developing and deploying new policies, tools, and cross-sectoral capabilities. Our colleagues at the University of Indonesia have undertaken extensive research against a set of biophysical, political, and social criteria to select a site for the demonstration. They've identified a 2.5 kilometer section of a tributary in the upper Chitaram catchment that currently has no sanitation or waste services and is typical of areas with mixed land uses. A delivery model is to create a living lab research platform. We'll bring together global academic expertise across a range of disciplines, work together with Indonesian government at all levels and across relevant agencies, and engage deeply with communities and industry to create opportunities for new circular and green businesses. We are well on the way to establishing the International Consortium. The next step is exploring a blended funding model where, fund, funders, where different funders can support environmental and climate change components, poverty and health components, economic recovery components, and the infrastructure components of the program. I would like to finally acknowledge the co-authors of this presentation from the University of Indonesia, Reni Suazo, Gunanti Marthanti, Raga Pratama, Cindy Priyadi, Joshua Sarinsong, Rifki Damawan, and from Monash University, Diego Ramirez Lovering, Rob Raven, Tony Wong, Vika Navalia, Diki Tanumi Hadja, Fraser Toll, and Paul Satur. And from the West Java Environmental Agency, Dr. Prima Ayang Tias, and from the City of Melbourne, Megan Koko. Sarah Makassi, and thank you.